Good morning, I'm Pastor Doug Tomhave. I serve here at St. Paul's in Lake Mills, and it's good to be with you in another week. Morning devotions are where we gather around God's Word with some just some thoughts on different areas of Scripture, and we're in the midst of the Advent season, and so I thought I'd spend some time. It seems maybe this is not uh, the most timely thing for the Lord's Supper discussion, because usually that's a Lent discussion or a Holy Week discussion, uh, but I've been assigned this topic for my midweek Advent service, it's the Lord's Supper. And I thought, let's just spend some time going through um, why we need it, the problem, how God addresses it, how do we prepare for it, and what do we get from it. And it really hinges on um, the message of John the Baptist, even that you heard today, that uh, God sent John to be the forerunner to Jesus. And and we heard on last week when I was talking about uh, John the Baptist and his message, that he says that the mountains need to be brought low and the valleys filled and that the uh, crooked roads be made straight. And so this is in preparation for the king. You want all the roads to be just the way they're supposed to be, to be passable and, and to be repaired. But it, it, this is way too big of a project for us to accomplish. We don't have the right tools. We don't have nearly the equipment we need to do that. He's not talking about roads. He's talking about our heart. Are you ready to receive the king, because he is coming. Is your heart prepared? Has it been repaired? Is it straight? Is it is it uh, the, the, the parts that are too low, have they been leveled out? Are the parts that are too high been, been brought down? Whether it's pride or whether it's despair, I have, have is, you, is it level so the king can come right into your heart? Are you ready to receive him? And really, the only way that we can deal with that is the passage of Scripture coming from the Apostle Paul, who talks about really the dilemma here and why we need uh, the advent of our King Jesus. And this is what Paul says as he talks about what's going on in his heart. And I think you can not only relate, but completely empathize. And he says, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. And then he goes on a few verses later to give this assessment about himself. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? And that's really what the law does. It brings us to that moment to make us realize what we deserve. We are not ready on our own to receive God. If you were to appear today and your heart would have been only prepared by what you've accomplished in life, the level to which you've obeyed God's commands, the, the things that you've fulfilled that God said you must do, the things you've avoided that God said to stay away from, if this was the criterion of you receiving God and God being able to come into your heart and, and make a home there, a perfect and holy God cannot be in the presence of the sinner, it wouldn't go well. Who, who's going to rescue me? This is the way it is every single day for us. There's a civil war going on in us between the sinful nature and the new person in Christ. I have the desire to do what is good. I, I read it and I know it in God's word. My conscience has been aligned with what God says. I have the desire to do this, but I cannot carry it out. There's another part of me that I've been born with, that sinful nature that works against this. And so the good I want to do, this I do not do. And, and the evil that I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. What a wretched man I am. Who's going to rescue me from this body that you can tell is dying? And it's not just COVID. And it's not just cancer. It's every day it ticks toward the end of this, this life. And, and this is what God says in resolution to that. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Apostle Paul said the only solution is Jesus it's the same thing John the Baptist said. Repent. The kingdom of God is near. And then who did he point to? He pointed to Jesus. He's the only one that could change the heart for good. He's the only one that could make a lasting change. He's the only one that can prepare hearts to receive God. And that's really what this Advent season is about. It's preparing our hearts to receive God. It's the law going in and, and digging out the areas that are too high and, and filling in the areas that are too low and making the crooked straight. And then the gospel comes and, and gives us what we need spiritually so that our heart is aligned with God. And how does God see us when it comes to Jesus? Well, it's very simple. When you, when you think of the sacrament, this is where Jesus comes to us and says, this is what I did for all your sins. The times you did not do the things you should do and the times you did do the things you shouldn't be doing, 
This is where I came and lived perfect in your place and received in my own body the punishment for those sins so that God the Father could look to you and see you through Jesus' perfect and holiness sight, prepared for God to return. And that's what the sacrament is to do in a real and personal way, is to prepare our hearts, to assure our hearts that all is well. It's to, in a real and physical way, give us the three words that assure us of our salvation. It's our God through Jesus saying to us, I forgive you. And that is enough. So let's go into today with those three words ringing in our ears and the challenges of life out there, but God, the Holy Spirit, working in our hearts to attack the day with a new person that's been enlivened by Jesus Christ and the forgiveness that he gives. So we pray. Dearest Lord, help us each day as we face the civil war going on inside of us. May we be in tune to the new person in Christ that helps us overcome the sin that is around us, that is in within us, that we might give you the glory that we deserve, that you deserve. But Lord, we understand that this is not what earns salvation for us. It is what you do that earns salvation for us. So may our hearts be enabled to receive Jesus in the way that he comes to us, not simply as a baby in Bethlehem, but as a Savior who took away all our sins. And we'll see closely this week how that Savior comes to us in a real and personal way in the sacrament. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord's blessing be upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.